uh, we'll be having a discussion this morning on how uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers has partnered with TVET to, uh, to just to try to help young people to become the best they can be. Um, speaking to Miranda Pendo, uh, TVET coordinator, she will be telling more, uh, us more about uh, the TVET and the KM, how they have been uh, working together, how the journey has been, the achievements, and maybe the uh, mishaps and what they feel uh, they need to be. Uh, that which needs to be done, speak to us to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 channel, Facebook and Instagram. My name is Adereva Hillary. Good morning and welcome. How are you, Pendo? Fine, thank you, Hillary. How are you? I'm very well. Now, you know, we, we, we are in COVID-19 pandemic and uh, since it's your first time here with me, I'll ask you, how has COVID-19 impacted <laughs> you this far? <sighs> That's a very interesting question. Um, COVID-19, it's been both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. Positive in the sense that uh, with the flexibility, ability to work from home, I've been able to bond with my kids a lot more. Mm -hmm. Negative in terms of uh, the economic impact, uh, also in my personal businesses and consultancies, it's not been very easy. Mm -hmm. But on a lighter note i think it's also reduced the number of colds that i have seen in my house mm -hmm. so the hand washing has actually worked yeah. now the the place where you work from the association of manufacturers uh we 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 have the big four agenda and we have so yes. many companies in the country yeah. uh, how, how how is your job uh like during this pandemic with the manufacturing industries how are you faring on how are you working together or vitu zimesimama kwanza Okay, so um, as you are aware, manufacturing is one of the big four agenda, and uh, it's a very important uh, component within the country. Mm -hmm. So with the COVID-19, of course, there's been uh, a lax in manufacturing because mm -hmm. there's been reduction in uh, ability of people to purchase, so the purchasing power has gone down. Mm -hmm. It's also strained in terms of, for example, uh, shifts. So within manufacturing, we actually had a study mm -hmm. together with EY where we were looking at what is the impact of COVID-19 on manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, we've actually been able to record mm -hmm. um, a lot of impacts, um, both uh, the positive and the negative. The positive being a lot of uptake of local manufacturing, for example, for PPEs. And, but the negative, actually we've seen um, a couple of companies, a number of companies also closing, mm -hmm. reducing, downsizing, yeah. Uh, now that you have mentioned, before we even shift gears, you have mentioned of the research that you have done. Yes. And COVID-19, to some extent, according to the experts, it's kind of here to stay. Yes. S we have uh, lessons we have learned through the manufacturing industry and maybe the way forward through the research you, or you have been doing. Uh, is there anything that you have come up with on a from now? Uh, I think we can move because I've seen even organizations they are now saying people can work from home. We have seen online meetings have worked. Now, in the manufacturing industry, what is uh, that one thing new you feel we have done this and maybe we can carry it on even post COVID 19? Okay, maybe I'll just give you a, a snapshot of what we do at CAM. Mm -hmm. So, within CAM, uh, we are like a 60-year-old uh, business membership organization. We represent manufacturers across the country, and uh, we are looking as a goal to drive global competitiveness. So we are looking at having our membership drive global competitiveness. And uh, within CAM, we have a component that focuses primarily on policy, advocacy, and research. Mm -hmm. And it is from there that, for example, the study that I've talked about comes up. Because for us to be able to actively engage government on issues policy, we need active research. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, the lessons, for example, um, I think one of the lessons would be the importance of buy Kenya, build Kenya. The importance of being local, buying mm -hmm. local, because mm -hmm. we have quality, for example, right. that is also competitive on a national platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the importance of uh, ensuring that uh, we have uh, policies in place that encourage manufacturing because when you have the right policies in place, 
it has a trigger effect. It has an effect on the economy. It has an effect on unemployment. Mm -hmm. So having the right policies that encourage the growth of the manufacturing industry. All so right. I think that's one of the things that has been a lesson, mm -hmm. even for us internally and as, a, as for government to see. And that's something we really would like to really continue pushing on, having the right policies in place. Awesome. Let's move to... Um what brought us here. Yes. Tell me about TVET and uh, CAM. How did you partner? What uh, instigated the idea? What uh, prompted you to want to be partners with uh, TVET and not other universities or maybe say high schools? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, CAM, we work with the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And uh, because our core is manufacturing, there are issues on productivity, and then there are also issues on uh, skills. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up from our membership was the need to have quality and relevant skills that are market ready. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, for example, within a normal industry, for every single graduate engineer, you have three, four, five technicians. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it in terms of the elasticity or the number of people that an industry can take up, you see that comparatively, TVET will be able to take up a lot more mm -hmm. than the engineer who is from uh, our mainstream universities. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that our universities are not producing quality, but also just looking at what is the need within the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, when the issue of uh, quality skills kept coming up, so within CAM, our role is to address our manufacturing members issues mm -hmm. so the issue of skills kept coming up and we discussed with our members and asked what can we do and they said are you able to one do advocacy because our core role is advocacy advocate for more and involvement of industry mm -hmm. within the academia so that we are, as members of industry we are able to ad address issues on curriculum mm -hmm. we are able to address issues on the quality that comes out of the technical institutions. Mm -hmm. So we were able to now drive that and uh, through partnerships with the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. we've been able to work together to also drive the TVET reforms. I think you're aware of the TVET reforms that have seen um, agencies such as uh, CDAC, such as TVETA set up mm -hmm. to ensure that there's also mainstreaming within the Ministry of Education in terms of quality, in terms of uh, relevance for the market, in terms of having skills that the young people, when they get out of the training institution, they're ready for the market. Mm -hmm. So as we were doing that, we also identified a need to be able to link our members with quality skills. Mm -hmm. And from there, the TVET program came up within CAM itself. And uh, this, the TVET program within CAM is currently funded by the GIZ, the mm -hmm. German uh, Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. We've been running the TVET program from 2017. Again, like I said, it stems up from the need to ensure that our members have quality skills. Okay. And uh, how we do that is uh, by one, providing opportunity for young people, recent graduates within the, fa within the last five years, mm -hmm. to be able to get hands-on experience in the labor market. Because the young people say, we don't have an opportunity. No one is even giving us an opportunity mm -hmm. for internships. So we are able to identify what are those opportunities within our industries and then link up our young people mm -hmm. from the TTIs to those opportunities within our membership. As in, you're trying to say you have placements for attachment. Yes. You get them placements for attachment. For internships. And internships. For internships. All right. Yes. And, and uh, uh -huh. also... Um, as part of that, we also get them into jobs. So what happens is, for example, we have a member that says, I need this number of uh, technicians. I need two electrical technicians. I need five mechanical electricians. Mm -hmm. So we are able now to identify from there what, mm -hmm. who to link up to this member to get interviewed, to get shortlisted, and to transition into jobs. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, during uh, the first uh, days of the COVID-19, when it was first announced, and then all the stories were, we need uh, beds, we need CG, uh, what, what, and then ventilators. And then yes. we had some students who came up with an idea, yes. and they innovated some uh, ventilators. Okay. Now, how did CAM help them, if they ever did? Um, 
And if you never did that, what <laughs> has your plan? Because I know we have so many innovators out here. How, how is CAM um, encouraging young people to realize the, uh, their skills and their talents? And how do you mold them towards what they have and what they can do for our market? Okay. One of the interesting things is you'll realize that the biggest uh, users of the ventilators and uh, the sources were CAM membership. Mm -hmm. So when the ventilators came up, there was a linkage with the, within, within CAM we have different sectors. So one of the sectors is the automotive sector. And you see like the ventilators actually fit in within the automotive sector because it's a component where you're able to now do the, the welding and everything. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that CAM was not involved. What I'd say is it was a great thing that there was an innovation mm -hmm. and our membership has actually been able to support such innovations to ensure that one, they are out there, and two, that they are owned. Mm -hmm. Within um, CAM, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to talk much about what we do, but let me just get to talk about it now. Okay, yes, sure. That within CAM, we have different, uh, different components. One of the components, like I said, is uh, the policy, research, and advocacy, mm -hmm. which is actually the issue, it drives the research component. We have the membership component of CAM that looks at what are the issues that manufacturers face. Mm -hmm. How do we address those issues? For example, electricity, issues on county levies. Then we have uh, the CAM consulting. Mm -hmm. So the CAM consulting actually looks at growing the membership of CAM and driving them towards global competitiveness. And how does it do that? One, through training on productivity. So we have what we call the CAM Manufacturing Academy. Mm -hmm. So through the academy, it gives skills, technical skills, uh, productivity skills, relevant skills, for example, sales, to manufacturers. So we train them, mm -hmm. and they're able now to be more competitive. Then we have the SME hub. Now, the SME hub, looks at the small and medium enterprises that are focused on manufacturing and value addition. Mm -hmm. And then it handholds them. So if you're an SME in manufacturing, mm -hmm. you become a member of the SME hub. Mm -hmm. So you have the advantage that you're able to be handheld, your policy issues are able to be escalated to a national level. Mm -hmm. you, you get the relevant skills and the relevant market linkages. Mm -hmm. Then we have a component that focuses on energy, the Center for Energy and Green Growth. Mm -hmm. And now this looks at the productivity and energy efficiency and better use of resources. Mm -hmm. So within the Center of Energy Efficiency, then you have, what, for example, our flagship Energy Management Awards, where you're able to identify what are the innovations around energy management, what are the best practices in terms of reducing carbon footprints, for example. Mm -hmm. So it actually looks at the whole component of energy management. Then we have TVET that looks at how do you enhance human capacity, I mean human capital, by giving relevant skills to the relevant um, industries. Mm -hmm. So within TVET, of course, we do the linkages, the job placements, and of course, issues on advocacy around skills. Mm -hmm. Then we have the part that looks at the global market. And it looks at what are the markets out there through the business information. What, what are the markets out there? You want to do business in Comesa? How, how can you do that? How do you prepare for business mm -hmm. in Comesa? How do you prepare for export markets out of Africa, in Asia, for example, in Europe? So within CAM Consulting now, we have all those that ensure that as a manufacturer, all the things that you require are actually addressed in one. Then, of course, we have... A, a, um, we call it a mediation center that trains people and gives skills and information on issues on governance mm -hmm. and anti-corruption. So when you are within CAM, you find that it's holistic. And uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that young people are, their needs are identified, the innovations are addressed, right. they can fit within each of these. Mm -hmm. if, you're a, if you're a young person, who is interested in manufacturing and value addition, this space for you within CAM Consulting, mm -hmm. within the SME Hub. As long as you're doing manufacturing and value addition, you can become a member, you can get trained, you can get handheld, you can get market linkage. 
brings me to the young, question. Yes. I'm, the young, I'm a young person. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested now in the SME hub. Yes. What do I require to be the, a partner with CAM? Okay, you don't become a partner, you become a member. A member, uh -huh. Yes. And how that happens is uh, you express your interest. You let us know you in, you're doing what kind Officially of manufacturing. Officially by mail yes. or visiting your offices. Uh, by mail, mm -hmm. info at cam.co.ke. Right. You let us know what manufacturing are you doing. Mm -hmm. And then there's an officer in charge of that who will get in touch with you and be able to take you through the process. How do you register? How do we identify and assure that you actually fit in within the criteria of being a manufacturer? Mm -hmm. And what are those other issues that you'd require? Is this for free? Uh, membership is not for free, mm -hmm. but it's a minimum fee. It's very minimum. Mm -hmm. If you look at what you're gaining, it's very minimum. Okay. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you will market me. <laughs> we will help you get markets. We will not market you, but we will help you get markets. Mm -hmm. So if you're a young person, for example, who mm -hmm. is interested in uh, working within industry mm -hmm. as a, a technician, an engineer, then you're able to work through the TVET, um, the TVET uh, project. Mm -hmm. And you send your details. We also get in touch with you. We also train young people on work readiness. Why do we do that? Because it gives you an extra edge. Mm -hmm. A lot of industries say that the reason that young people don't really fit in is they don't have soft skills, life skills. So we give you one, that extra edge for free, mm -hmm. that is supported again by the donor, which is JZ. Mm -hmm. And then we're able now to link you, match you. So you are a young person, you're good in electrical, you're interested in an electrical position, so we take your CV, we match you with a couple of industries, you go there, you do your thing, mm -hmm. you get to shine, mm -hmm. and from there there's of course the natural attrition where there's some that are absorbed and some that will actually join other industries because it's given you an exposure and it's given you more confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, at CAM you have, you have mentioned of several components that you yes. have. Now with partnership with uh, TVET, with what Jason. programs now do you have now to help these young people further? So with, we partner with the JZ, mm -hmm. and then we also partner with the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. the Directorate of TVET. So our partnership with the, the Directorate of TVET is basically on uh, looking at issues of occupational standards, mm -hmm. the standards that ensure that uh, when a young person is trained in the technical institution, they are ready for the market. Mm -hmm. Looking at capacity building of techno technical trainers mm -hmm. so that they're able to train the graduates on the level that is required by industry. So that's the partnership with TVET. Mm -hmm. And then with the partnership with the JZ is now where the program is able now to provide that holistic approach, train you on work readiness, give you opportunity to be able to get internships, link you up to jobs and to do that through two components mm -hmm. one is we have a job site mm -hmm. where you can be able to put your profile online and uh, employers see that and then we're also going to be launching a mobile application where you'll be able to identify who is the nearest employer what do they want mm -hmm. you'll be able to also hire tools for example you want to go to a site but you don't have tools Instead of having to buy, you mm -hmm. have someone within that locality that you can be able to hire tools from and be able to do your hustle or your gig for the day and go back. So we'll be launching that mobile application mm -hmm. um, very soon so that our young people can be able to see what is it that CAM does for them. Mm -hmm. um, CAM is pretty youthful. I think you've so, seen so our CEO. So, yeah, it's pre true, it's true, pretty true. <laughs> So for CAM, young people are really important mm -hmm. because young people form the backbone of productivity. That's yeah. true. You, you mentioned something to do with the mainstream universities and the um, technical universities, and uh, there has been a perception. The person who went to the university, they are said to be, quote unquote, uh, superpower. But also when you look at someone who went to the technical college, they went to that particular course and they did it well. Uh, maybe because of their grades in school. Now there has been a bad image of technical yes. schools. Yeah. How are you now helping these young people and encouraging them? It doesn't matter whether you came to a technical school, you, you, what you learn here is equal to what someone else did in the university. 
how are you encouraging them when they come out here for searching for jobs and maybe even uh, looking for a job market? Um, one, I think the most important thing about accessing opportunities is really about perception and what you think. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of opportunities that are available if you're willing to take the risk, if you're willing to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I don't want to say that there's no unemployment, but I know that there is a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. For young people that are venturing into the Tivet space, mm -hmm. Tivet has a lot of opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. You can grow directly within the technicals, and you can grow and transition also into university. So right now, like for example, within the country, as part of the TVET reforms, mm -hmm. there is the Kenya National Qualifications uh, Framework mm -hmm. that shows how do you transition, for example, from an artisan level, and you can be able to move from artisan to a certificate, and you can actually be able to move that from an artisan to a master craftsman. Mm -hmm. So you're able to grow into your career and progress to even to the level of a master's and a degree level. Mm -hmm. So within the current framework, whichever pathway you choose, mm -hmm. you can be able to transition. Mm -hmm. So it is for every young person that is listening to me, I just want to encourage them that there is a lot of opportunity. There's, the pathways are a lot mm -hmm. and there's, there are a lot of courses. For example, there's mm -hmm. a course uh, that we are also partnering with GIZ done called Industrial Mechatronics. Interestingly, it's a mix of uh, mechanical and electrical. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, a lot of industries use, for example, and require mechatronics engineers. But that's a course that has not been trained in this country yet. Mm -hmm. We have that's that at technical. university level, but they're not very technical. Mm -hmm. So if you have a young person who is interested in being an industrial mechatronics engineer, then there's opportunity also, for example, at Kembu Institute of, mm -hmm. uh, at KIST, where they're training young people for diploma level mm -hmm. in industrial mechatronics, which will provide opportunity for you to transition into the job market. So there are a lot of opportunities, and it calls for an open mind. Mm -hmm. Do research, find out what are the trends. You're always on your... Um, computer or on your mobile phone, mm -hmm. we, we are looking towards Industry 4.0, where we are looking towards where there's a revolution in terms of technology. What are the trends out there? How do you position yourself to be able to fit in within where the industry is going? Mm. I, I wanted to tell you, preach, preach, because when we get to our phones, we have other things we want to see on Facebook, Instagram, and other uh, social media platforms. But anyway, this is, uh, other than the advertisements that we will see maybe on the mainstream or maybe we will see flyers, how else can I get this information uh, where uh, now you have mentioned of a new cause, no one, uh, I didn't know it, uh, how do we now get that exposure? Because most of the young people, they lack exposure. How do you get to these platforms? How do you get to this information other than the TV and maybe the phone you have mentioned? Is there any other way we can get Within to social media, yes. Mm -hmm. For example, if you follow um, the CAM Twitter handle, we have a lot of updates on what is going on within the manufacturing space. Mm -hmm. And then also other partners. For example, any technical training institution, if it's active on social media, then you get information. And then there's word of mouth. That is, I think, the greatest mm -hmm. um, way that you can get information from each other. Because you have other young people that have tried, they've seen the advantages, and they can actually be able to tell you, okay, by the way, this works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, true. Now, tell me about cooperative vocational training, uh, which is one of your... I would say the program or component. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, how, how, tell me about it. How is it? Um, what's your target? What are you looking for uh, after you have achieved or when will you, do you think you will have achieved? The okay. Program? Cooperative vocational training. So what is cooperative vocational training, for example? And uh, this is where a young person gets the opportunity to work and learn. Okay. 
So what is the advantage of that? It allows the young person to get more hands-on exposure. When you get out into the industry, industry wants to be able to know, can you do? Mm -hmm. So cooperative vocational training is based on the ability to be able to do. So you get a lot of exposure in terms of getting out there, learning, learning and getting back to industry, applying your knowledge, learning, getting back to industry and applying your knowledge. So we are running a cooperative training program mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, also in partnership with the GIZ and it is being done with uh, three technical training institutions. So we call them centers of excellence. Mm -hmm. Um, one is uh, the Nairobi Technical Training Institute that is a center of excellence in automotive mechatronics. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Thika Technical Training Institute that is a center of excellence in uh, auto body technology, so the bodybuilding components of our vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, KIST, the Kiambu Institute of Science and Technology that I'd mentioned earlier, that is a center of excellence in industrial mechatronics. So the, com the cooperative vocational um, training is where young people are getting into class. The, the first class starts in October and it starts virtually. Then they do their one term in class, then they do another term in, the in, a, in, a, in a, an industry. Mm -hmm. So it is going to run for a period of uh, two and a half to three years where it is 50% in class and 50% in industry. This is something that has worked in other countries, for example, Germany and uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, has been seen to add value in terms of uh, the quality of the graduate. You get out ready for the market, mm -hmm. rather than what we've been having where when you, you get out into the market, now industry has to now train you again for themselves, which is an additional cost that costs even amounts to up to two years. Which so, is even difficult when they, yes. they, they say they need someone who has an experience of six years and then you're like, I never went anywhere. I have yes. the skills, but I... I never uh, put them to practice. To practice, yes. Um, so, uh, uh, CAM is coming in to help these young people. Now, other than uh, the persons from the technical, are you doing the same with persons in the university? So, at the moment, our focus is primarily on the technical. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's based on what our member needs. Okay. So, f like I said, for every single technician that is from mm -hmm. every single engineer, that does the drawings, you need about five, six technicians. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at one, what is the elasticity? What do our members really need? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, CAM is there to ensure that the needs of the local manufacturers mm -hmm. are addressed mm -hmm. so that they are more competitive. That's right. Yes. All right, now you, you have uh, these uh, particular courses for a very long time. They have been uh, um, said to be for men. And now in your programs, you have enrolled uh, more ladies coming to STEM uh, courses yes. where now we have had a perception again <laughs> of e in Yawanome, like the engineering. I've seen them uh, drive the caterpillars in the construction industry and I'm like, oh, okay. Empowerment and then transformation. Uh, wh what do you have to say about all this? Okay, at, this, at the risk of sounding cliche, <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that there is primarily no work that is uh, gender specific. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen that even within uh, our manufacturing space, mm -hmm. that we are having owners of manufacturing mm -hmm. industries who are also women, mm -hmm. who are technicians, they get into overalls and they're able to do. Mm -hmm. So for all the girls that want to get into manufacturing, mm -hmm technical space, the sky is not the limit. Sure. Yeah? We, within CAM, we have the women in manufacturing. And uh, the women in manufacturing component is actually looking at how do we encourage more women and girls mm -hmm. to get into manufacturing? How do we provide them with a platform to be had? How do we provide mentorship for other women and girls within that ecosystem? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, for example, if you look at any TTI, mm -hmm. the number of girls that join a TTI are many. In the first year, mm -hmm. within a specific class, for example, electrical, you'll mm -hmm. get 30 girls, 40 girls. Mm -hmm. 
when they move into the second year, mm -hmm. they drop off, move into a course that people will say that's more feminine. All right, yeah. So the women in manufacturing component within the Tivet space, for example, is actually looking at showing these girls within TTI is that, you know what, mm -hmm. we have these members mm -hmm. that are members of CAM that are doing it. You can be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But also within WIM for other manufacturers is giving women a voice to be heard, mm -hmm. to do advocacy on issues that are pertinent to manufacturing and to also provide space for mm -hmm. them to just voice out. Mm -hmm. So there's opportunity for girls within manufacturing. Mm -hmm. They need to just go for it. Mm -hmm. And also there's a need for institutions to be sensitive to the needs for girls. Exactly. Ensure that they are PPEs. Ensure that basic things like toilets are available. Yeah, actually, I want you to hold on that thought. Uh, there's, there's something going on around uh, our country. And I think the statement she was trying to avoid is uh, what a, a man can do, a woman can <laughs> do better. Being a case, uh, TVET and uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, I'm speaking to uh, Pendo. Uh, she's uh, telling me many things what are happening and what uh, CAM has been doing for young people, especially the young, uh, or you could say the small uh, medium enterprises. And that's where I want us to go after telling me what a man can do, a woman can do better. But before then, kuna kitu lukumesema. That was Sena Wasaidiwe. Actually, uh, send us your comments or uh, questions to all our social media platforms, Y254 channel on Facebook and Instagram, at Y254 channel on Twitter. Let us know how you feel. Kumesemekana hapa young SMEs wanasaidiwa. It's good you know how Tourism maswali by the way, because Mimi, I'm like, I, I thought it's free. I'm told it's not free. How much is it? I don't know. Kama yoni kitu kuangelelo apa mani kuenda kuambiwa kwa vitabu. So, um, the ladies, the, the engineering sector, for a long time it was believed kuwa kazi ya wanaume. Do you think we have embraced our women in the right way? Bado mkona power ama tunasumbwa na kidogo? That's a, very, that's a very interesting and tricky question to answer. <laughs> In the sense that, what is power? Mm -hmm. My thoughts that society, it's really complementary, it's not competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. It means that there's also an opportunity for, for example, young men should also not feel that this, certain jobs are just for women because mm -hmm. that's how society has perceived them. If there's an opportunity and you're able to do it, go for it. Mm -hmm. Nothing should hold you back. The good thing about this country is that it is open and it allows you to really achieve your potential mm -hmm. regardless of your age, your gender, religious affiliation and all that. Mm -hmm. So if there's an opportunity that is there for men, for women, go for it. Exactly. You mentioned about a component in the income. Yes. And maybe you can intertwine it with the, the programs that you're running, um, helping the SMEs. Because how do you wengi? How do you wengi? Easy, easy PP, seasons, mekwazi kitengenez, or majority have been the youths. Uh, you look at uh, s simple things like, um, say, uh, the deco industry. We will see how I see our tent. Najua, izo, izo materials in Atokanga wapi. Kiangalia mafundi, the same, same things. Mutonge penda ku supply. So these are the young people on your crazy sectors. We could say, well, majority of the young people are in the Juakal industry. And mutona come up to Nakitu Yakanana. How, how specifically, as in two details, how is this person helped to market either locally and even abroad? Hi. Number one, EO had helped Sipoa. Okay. Trained. Supported. <laughs> supported. Mm -hmm. Helped in a mean, um, see, Hana, Hana, Wezo, Akotu. Mm -hmm. Yet, every young person, for example, by the time, um, see, Ako, Jobiake, uh, Juakali, Uni, um, see, Ameiva. Mm -hmm. As in, kile ana need to ni iyo extra tag. As a kuachiv tu ile kitu ana, ana, ana taka kuachiv. Mm -hmm. So what we do at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers within the SME component is we look specifically, um send him to and do manufacturing the value addition. Mm -hmm. Ju, 
There are a lot of other organizations that deal with other um, SMEs. So sisi kwa sabu sisi ni wase wa manufacturers. Uu yutman anawakna ni mse manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So kama ni manufacturer, tick number one. You can join our program. So how do you do that? Reach out. Nimesema tu ma email info at kam.co.ke. Mm -hmm. Wase wako kam, wengi wao ni vijana. So kuna vile wata engage. Mm -hmm. Then wataweza kukuambia one, ku understand program yako better, ile job unaduwa na you understand better. Mm -hmm. Alafu after washa duivo, then wanakweka within program specific ambao uteza ku, kupewa skills. Mm -hmm. So kuna zingine ambazo ni za free, ambazo ziko supported for example na partners, kama donors ka JZ, mm -hmm. na kuna zingine enye lazima pia wewe ufike kwa mfu. Mfu kwa mfu. Na ukisha pewa skills weze, weze kujismamia, kuridi kwa mfu kwa utasikia uchungu. Because unona, what is the value unapata? Mm -hmm. So within SME component, for example, and uh, linking na program ile na duya TVET, me, for example, says in that after my SME youth, 167. Eh, hey, mumeskia yo? Mumeskia, 167. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. number four. Na, how, how ni wase ambao... Manufacturers. Manufacturers. Na how ni wase ambao, nita work na how, kuwa peleka for through trainings flani through our SME hub waweze kukuwa competitive wako na basics for example registration ya business a lot of young people are doing manufacturing and they're not registered for you to be competitive how do you become competitive without for example being registered mm -hmm. what do you store your cabs how do you prepare for cabs mm -hmm. So our say 167 ambao ni mesema, our ni wale tu specific wa Wativet. Wativet. Ambao, watenda through hizo training, uweze kukua more competitive. Ndiyo, uneza angalia hila luka sema, 2010, tulichukua wase 10. Mm -hmm. Ama wase 50. I mean 2020, tuko 2020. Oh, 2020. Apo ndo korona imenifikisha. Apo ndo korona imenifikisha. Apo ndo korona imenifikisha. So 2020, tulikuwa na wase 50 for example. Mm -hmm. 2021 tuko na wase 50 wengine. Mm -hmm. So tumefika so. Mm -hmm. By 2022 tunataka kuangalia wale 50 wa kwanza. What has been the change in their mm -hmm. in their businesses? Have they recorded more sales? Have they been able to even sell outside for example of their county? Have they registered their businesses? Wame register pia na KEBS. Wako na hiyo KEBS certification. Mm -hmm. Kuna wale ambao wako for example ready for export. Hata kupeleka vitu UG, by the way, ni kitu mm -hmm. kubwa. Because hiyo ni market ingine ambayo watu wengi mm -hmm. hawana hiyo ability ya kuaccess. Na, na, na feel before hata tu, tuende into details of all those, to define new manufacturers, juneza sikia mse mwenye anafanya tu job yake mtaani anajida hiyo ni manufacturer. Who is a manufacturer? Manufacturer ni mse anachukua kitu, anajenga, inakuwa kitu ingine ambayo inazatumika. Kitu. Kitu. So, For artist example, wa kuchora, ayuko hapo. <laughs> so, kuchora, ayuko hapo. Mm -hmm. Lakini, mse wa kuchora, pia kuna program za nini partners wengine aneza fit in. Wase wa carvings wa kuapo. Wanyo wana chonganga mbao zina kuwa siju mayo nini wanauza wa kuapo. Yeah. Eh, uyo ni... Uyo ni... Uyo wacha niangalie. Uyo wako kwa wudu. Kwa sababu kuna wase wengi atakuambia ji. Kwa kwetu tu kwa na nini, dilikuwa mbetu na kwa gana sectors. Mm -hmm. Kwetu uyo, uyo ni sector inaitua wood, timber, and furniture. So uyo mtu anachonga, mm -hmm. anafitin kwa hiyo ya timber. Because pia, kwetu kuna manufacturers ambao, wanachukua ambao, mm -hmm. wanatengeneza, mm -hmm. wanatengeneza matebos, nini, 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 wanauzia wase, na wengine wanafanya mpaka export. Mm -hmm. yeah. So watu wa mtrumu si tusumbo, tunatafta wa ntuski <laughs> <laughs> manufacturers peke yake uh -huh. mm. ukisha wachukua training ya for how long what are some of the programs utakuna wa run through so with um, in partnership na tena hii project tu tunafanya bado na JZ mm -hmm. ni um, au ma SMEs mm -hmm. like I said kuna program in a business growth ambayo SME habi ufanya and mm -hmm. na kuna components zizo business growth program ambazo awa se watatrainiwa Ju, to kiangaleo mse ni mtu, for example, hana yu skill, aonyeshe, how do you market yourself? 
unaweza jiuza aje mm -hmm. uko social media unaweza je tumia hiyo social media u get a market niche mm -hmm. utaji brand aje exactly so tutakupatia hiyo training ambayo ita itakupatia skills hizo different skills na sasa ti training inafanywa once like mm -hmm. i said ni kitu tunatembea na yeye between 2020 na 2023 tutakuwa tumetembea na huyu kijana tunajoao hapa njio umefikia mm -hmm. because at the end of the day tunataka kuona out of our was 167 ni wangapi wanaweza fika level for example kama ya bidku mm -hmm. how do we get to a level kama ya bidku si hata walianza small exactly ni by ku make sure kuna hiyo hand holding na kukufuatilia mm -hmm. of course kuna natural lolo hapo hawatakuwa na vision ya kusonga mbali sana mm -hmm. but hiyo pia si mbaya sana because atakuwa job hapana <laughs> si mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. So atakuwa amejiandika. Mm -hmm. Juu amejiandika yes in success. Mm -hmm. eh. Wow. So uh, that's the e COVID-19 na kuzuia kupata wase. Um, vijana wachokagi. Kwa sasa hivi nimesema umepeana email people will reach out you will have over a thousand. What will be your selecting criteria other than ama e akue manufacturer? What other thing will be your score? mwache akwe manufacturer na kama unataka story ya tvet nitumie email tvet@com.co.ke tvet t v e t .co.ke all right as we finish since 2017 what have you achieved since 2017 um tume we've run a pilot a pilot, the Tivet program was actually a pilot mm -hmm. where we were able to uh, work with 1023 young people mm -hmm. across the country out of this uh, about 750 were trained in uh, work readiness mm -hmm. we've had more than 400 getting employed within our manufacturing members mm -hmm. network mm -hmm. and then a, a lot of others who moved into self employment so wale well, walijifungulia job hiyo time atakuwa tuna track but mm -hmm. say tuna track tutakujua what have you really moved into mm -hmm. so in terms of uh, the achievement of those 1000 young people i can say maybe 10% ndo wanaweza kuwa 10 mm -hmm. maximum 20 wanaweza kuwa mpotelea somewhere watu wa fanani eh because we've had young people one getting employed mm -hmm. moving into self employment some going back into school to upskill themselves mm -hmm. so don't you any success mm -hmm. because True. as having gone through the program and on hey, by the way nafani rudi rudi shule exactly now uh, with the 10% as you respond to the challenges that you have faced what do you think could have attributed to our 10% maybe kupotelea maalivi what are some of the challenges that you have faced and maybe the solutions you came up with Number one, um, attitude. For example, ukipelekwa job alafu ukae useme eh hey, hii job hawa mm -hmm. sana nipatie maroutine. Mimi nataka kupewa machine within week one. Mm -hmm. Which if a machine is worth millions, you have to grow into it. You get. So mm -hmm. one is attitude. Um, another thing is uh, just that personal drive for you to be able to achieve anything you really need kujiskuma mm -hmm. so there's also the issue of personal drive and then another thing the third thing is uh, like i said issues of policy mm -hmm. and uh, employment elasticity hakuna job za kutosha hakuna opportunities za kutosha kuna policies zingine hapo zinakazia for example mm -hmm. ambazo they're not opening providing opportunity for absorption of 100% True. and as come particularly like what we do the issues of policy are things that that's our key mm -hmm. ensuring that we do policy advocacy so that our manufacturers are very competitive mm -hmm. not just locally but also globally True. yeah all right with that i'll give you an opportunity to speak to the young people out there waambio hiyo email address tena na ni nini wanatafuta na ni nini watapata from you your final words this will be your camera <laughs> <laughs> okay so i do that in english as well 
huku ni kwa kwa wasio mayuls kuna Aya. kuna wasio wa sheng kuna watu tu wenye wameomoka hizo design na wengine wametoka kiambuka <laughs> sisi so sheng atujuagi hivyo vyote mm. Aya. so um, for every young person that's listening to me the one thing that i'd like first to say is the sky is not the limit you are your own limit yeye inamaanisha kile chochote unataka kudu you can do it if you want to go for it go for it go for it just kume go for it hakuna ga limit at least the sky is the limit as we when do your own limit so whatever you want to do do it in terms of the support that uh, you're able to get from uh, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers are you a young person who is doing manufacturing and value addition then reach out to us and let us partner together let us drive the economy of this country together because there's a lot of opportunity for manufacturing to grow within this country now if you're a young person and you're doing um, technical vocational education and training when i do stories electrical mechanical you've been graduated and ujapata stories internship reach out to us and also reach out to your technical training institution because chances are that ni met after industry liaison officer when you nikamuuliza by the way nipatie list na hauko kwa hiyo list so pia ensure ya kwamba ilo place uliko unasomea ako na contact zako na CV yako and uh, you can drop us an email email yetu ya tvet ni tvet t v e t at kam k a m dot c o dot k e so you can drop us an email at tvet.com.co.ke questions zozo zote ambazo unazo unaweza tumia pia info@com.co.ke so tunataka ku ensure that tuna grow hii economy pamoja because young people are the future of today mm -hmm. thank you all right uh comments is sharing